Okay, testing to make sure everything is good to go. The video um, editing of this is going to be a little bit weird because I'm doing trading between past and present in terms of what I'm going to feature in this video. So I figured I'd do an intro um, after the footage that you're going to see later on in this video and then um, doing the respective book haul. Hi everyone, my name is Rose, also known as T.A. Summers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bookstore visit as well as a subsequent book haul. So I was able to take a Friday night to go to my local, one of my local Barnes & Noble bookstores to pick up a bunch of books that I wanted to be able to read and it had been the first time in quite some time that I've been in a Barnes and Noble. Usually when I do um, my book shopping like I go to a variety of different places including my indie bookstores locally but for this particular trip since it was the first time that I went to my Barnes and Noble since they remodeled it and um, did an overhaul of the inventory, I decided, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And apparently I thought that my membership had expired with Barnes & Noble, but apparently not. So I've had my um, Barnes & Noble uh, membership for quite some time now and like it automatically upgraded. So I was like, okay, so I guess I might as well just go ahead and use the value of my respective uh, membership and just get some books. And so I do... I uh, want to note that I do uh, like uh, narrate certain pieces of this like to kind of coincide with my previous video on the channel in terms of the amount of um, illustrated covers and um, things like that because it's definitely changed in my um, local bookstore in terms of the layout and how things are um, positioned since the last time I was in there including the fact that the mass market paperback um, section has shrunk essentially shrunk down compared to what it used to be when I was there so I was like wow like it was kind of a little bit of culture shock to be honest with you in terms of um, what it featured but I'll go ahead and, and just kick off this respective video with um, this intro going into my commentary and footage from my bookstore visit and then I'm going to come back here and show you what my haul was so Let's go ahead and dive in. So editing Rose here for a specific note on this. So I had focused mainly in this bookstore visit on YA romance as well as manga. So I was looking at other sections in terms of things, but in terms of the the um, titles that I were looking, the book, particular bookshelves that I was looking for, I was looking specifically in those genres. So I didn't get a chance to be able to um, showcase like some of the other sections like sci-fi, fantasy, and I took a full, probably about an hour and a half like in Barnes & Noble to be able to browse certain things, but because of how crowded it was, Friday night of course, um, and also um, because of time, I decided to just focus on those respective genres, specifically in age groups. So that's what you'll see in this video. Hope you enjoy. So look at here, what, look what I found. There's a copy of Big Bad Wolf here. So <laughs> I already have this book, but this was a great one. I'm planning on rereading it soon. I can honestly say it looks like that. A lot of these are um, illustrated or discrete covers. Not a lot of covers with um, either real models or 
otherwise in terms of the um, trade um, paperbacks, whereas the mass market paperbacks are are kind of a more balance in terms of things. So, so I talked about the redesigned covers for Sylvia Day's Bear to You. So this is what Bear to You looks like in terms of things, and it looks like it, they already have it in stock. So I think for the Black Queen, they changed the cover. Yeah, it's distinctly more discreet now. <laughs> Which is really interesting to me in terms of how they decided to change it. But uh, the less I talk about that, the better.
Seems like a lot of these are older titles, some of which I've read before. I don't think I've read Mirror Girls, and I think it's in paperback, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get it. This, I believe, is a gothic um, YA where it talks about twins that are separated at birth, and it's also a historical YA, so I'm definitely going to get this. Of course, you see Twilight, The Ravens, The 100, Cursed. Some of these I have not heard of, actually. Let's see, Delicious Monsters, I think, is in paperback now. I already have the hardcover. Oh, wow, they redesigned this cover. I actually really like the newer one better. Decisions, decisions. I should probably try to see if I can pick up this series. Looks cool. I feel almost intimidated because it's been a little while since I've picked up any manga titles, but there are a lot of series that I have not read yet. Uh, decisions, decisions. <laughs> So this manga was one of the ones that I wanted to get. This is the second volume of Anti-Romance, which I read the first one and I loved it. So I'm definitely going to pick this one up. Alrighty, I am back on the other side of things now. So before I get into what I was able to get for my book haul for Barnes & Noble, I want to just point out a couple of Illumicrate edition covers and books that I was able to pick up. So let's just go ahead and get into that first one I want to feature. You've seen it on my shelf and I'll probably put it right back um, here. But I was able to pick up uh, V.H. Schwab's The Fa Fragile Threads of Power. This is the cover, the Illuminate Crate cover edition for your reference. So you can see this, is, it matches the special editions of the hard covers that uh, went with the uh, Conjuring of Lights um, series, the other series that is the prequel series to this uh, respective book. And I'm probably going to try to see if I can read that respective series before I even start on this one. But I did like the fact that they complemented the art of those respective um, cover editions. They have since redesigned them. I will put them up here for your reference just to make a note of what they've changed it to. But I did like the fact that they uh, kind of kept the same cover scheme um, with this Illumicrate Edition design. And as you can see, as usual with um, Illumicrate Editions, they have like nice, really nice artwork on the inside flaps, as well as the fact that um, this is the hardcover um, 
design on the inside of the flap and you can also see the artwork on the inside of the flap here too that is very very interesting and very very cool i'm glad that i have this respective edition of my collection for v schwab's the fragile threads of power i've heard mixed reviews on the actual book itself but i figure i'm gonna try to just like a reserve judgment about it and then just go into the series um and give you my thoughts i'm reading all three books of um the um respective preview series for that and i have all of them in my collection i'm trying to do more of reading what i own before i buy a bunch of other books so i'm not limiting myself in terms of what books i'm picking up obviously because i think like uh, this is my um uh, my um numerous uh book haul in so many months so it, it like i'm still buying a lot of books in, in terms of things i have not stopped book buying but i am trying to read more of what i own and be able to give my thoughts on the things that i pick up the other book that I also picked up from the Luma Crate, which is the third book in this respective trilogy, and it did finally uh, release, um, highly anticipated and on terms of things. This is The Atlas Complex by Libby Blake. As you can see, this is the cover for your reference. This is the Luma Crate edition. It has sprayed edges. Um, you can see the artwork on the inside. This is absolutely gorgeous. So I knew I wanted to have of this since I have the other um, books in the respective um, series um, but this is the one that I wanted to get in terms of the final book for um, this respective like edition and as you can also see for um, the inside on um, hardcover this is what it looks like really really pretty I'm trying to remember if this was signed I'm not 100% sure if it is yes it is signed signed by the author right here yeah let me see also if the Fragile Threads of Power was a signed edition. I'm not 100% sure if it was. I could be wrong. No, it's signed. See? It's signed for Fragile Threads of Power. So I'm glad that I have signed editions for this and also just the, the fact that they're really lovely um, cover editions for these respective series. I actually do need to uh, read the collective series. I started reading um, the Atlas trilogy, um, like with the Atlas 6. I have the independently published Atlas, a copy of Atlas 6, but you'll also see in my respective book haul that I also was able to pick up the uh, the um the re-release of it like um as published by the, the publisher so i have that whole series to be able to read and give my thoughts on so now we get into my respective barnes and noble book haul based on what i was able to pick up during my visit uh first thing that i want to uh like highlight are the two mass market paperback editions of books that I was able to pick up and one of them is a classic the other one is a harlequin um, romance first one that I want to um, highlight is the classic this is Sherlock Holmes the Hound of the Baskervilles by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle this is actually one of my favorite Sherlock Holmes stories and I did want to be, get this particular edition because it is actually very nicely designed and definitely I uh, want to be able to reread this because it's been a little while since I've actually picked it up. So I am definitely going to be uh, rereading this and giving you my thoughts on it, but it's been a little while since I've, um, I've read this. Next one is a Harlequin special edition. This is Her New York M Minute by Darby ba Baham. And this is the cover up for your reference. This is... I think um, a story of a, a British woman who lands in um, New York City and um, it explores her respective relationship. I do, uh, I am looking forward to being able to see what um, this offers. It looks really cute and I had heard about it um, in a couple of circles in terms of recommendations so I definitely want to be able to pick this up and I'm glad I was able to find it in Barnes & Noble. Um, it, uh, it, on the respective shelves, uh, it, it, even though the the mass market paperback section has drastically shrunk uh, compared to when the last time that I was there, I was able to pick up some um, romance titles, and you may be surprised that they are actually illustrated in terms of things because, like I said before, I 
have no um, reservations about picking up illustrated covers for um, certain books as long as it matches tonally what um, the uh, it's offering with respect to the content and how well it's designed. So I found two and they're like uh, one of them is one that I had had on my radar for a little bit and I was wondering if um, Barnes & Noble had it in stock and they actually did. And then the other one was a pleasant surprise to me in terms of what I was able to pick up. So the first one, which I did not expect to pick up and this looks extremely cute. This is Sarah Grunder Ruiz's A Last Call of the Local. This is a cover up for your reference look at this cover though like it is super cute this is adult romance and it is published by i believe penguin uh, berkeley penguin uh, random house so i'm definitely excited to be able to um, read this i think this has to do with a like a um the one of the main characters living with adhd um meeting a musician and their respective relationship i um, the premise appealed to me as soon as I saw the cover I was like okay this is beautiful what is this about I told you all before in the previous video in terms of things like if the, if the cover appeals if I'm doing physical book shopping if the cover appeals to me of course I'm going to look on the back and see what it's about but I was really intrigued by the premise of this it was an unexpected pickup and I am very excited to be able to give y'all my thoughts on this once I have the opportunity to do so. This next one is a romance that I knew I wanted to pick up. I, I'm trying to remember if I actually had the approval for the galley copy for this. I'm not 100% sure if I did, but I still ended up picking it up, uh, like considering um, the fact that like this it has to do with rival archeologists and uh, was um, advertised kind of like on this really interesting like um expedition for like through the mexican jungle and um like looking at different um things this is raiders of the lost heart by joe segura and look at this cover this cover is awesome I, like i like i love the premise i love the cover i loved everything about this when i first heard about it so i'm definitely um excited to be able to give this a read and give you my thoughts and I mentioned that I um, actually picked up this copy. I do have a copy of this book in my collection already, but it is the independently published version. I finally did get a chance to pick up the um, the uh, the um, the traditionally published edition of this. So now I have the complete series in my collection. This is the Atlas Six by Livy Blake. As you can see, this is the cover up for your reference. This is the paperback edition, and I'm excited to be able to um, get to this. I did start reading um, this respective series. I have not finished it. I, I did like it from where I started, but I definitely want to kind of do a marathon read of this respective series and give my thoughts on each of the books um, contained in it. So we'll see how this goes. I, I'm excited to be able to get to it. Next, I'm going to um, highlight some manga that I picked up, and this may surprise no one in terms of what I was able to pick up. I had review read and reviewed uh, the first volume of this respective manga series on the channel before. You can see that video up for your reference in the cards and in the link down below. But this next one is the um, second volume, and I had no idea that this had released in terms of things. So it was a pleasant surprise to be able to see the second volume um, available in my Barnes & Noble. This is Anti-Romance Volume 2 by Shoko Hidaka. As you can see, this is the very lovely cover up for your reference. So I'm excited to be able to see where this series goes and give my thoughts about it once I finish. Next was a recommendation that was given to me and I was specifically looking for this copy in on Barnes and Noble and I was able to find it. Um, since I was operating on a book budget, I was like, okay, like, I, like I wanted to, I, I saw multiple volumes that were available, but I decided to just get the first one. This is My Summer of You by Nagisa Furuya. As you can see, this is a cover for your reference. I have not read the series yet, so some of the, uh, some of y'all may be surprised. I have not, like, as much um, praise as this particular series has gotten I have not had the opportunity to pick this up and so like I'm very excited to be able to get to this and give you my thoughts on it. 
Next we have another manga and this is a series that I am familiar with mainly for, through playing it through um, the games that I own in my collection and y'all know that it, if you follow my channel and you've heard my commentary on like gaming you know that I love the Persona series and you know that I love the Shin Megami Tensei series but um, I um, realized that for some of the um, offshoot games that um, are associated with the series, particularly uh, P uh, Persona 4. I have not had the opportunity to be able to fully play them. I I've played them a little bit in the past, but not so much. So th this was a pleasant surprise for me to see um, this respective manga, and I did pick it up as a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. This is Persona 4 Arena Ultimax um, by Rokuro Saito Atlas. And as you can see, this is the cover of the first volume for this series. So I'm familiar with the game that's associated with this. This is uh, based on an older game that was originally released, I think, on the PS3. And um, if you've heard of Persona 4, um, uh, like Arena Ultimax, this was a, um, a, a scenario that takes place after the events of Persona 4 in which uh, you, uh, Narukami, if I remember correctly, I think that's uh, the traditional name for the protagonist for um, Persona 4, um, is thrown alongside his friends into uh, this weird um, battle of ro uh, royale competition, um, like, and essentially is trying to navigate the events in terms of after um, that happens. And it uh, is a smorgasbord of different um, combinations of characters, including um, those from Persona 4, as well as the Persona 3 universe. So this is a series that I'm excited to be able to read and get to. I will give you my thoughts on the first volume as soon as I can. I really want to pick up even more of this respective series, but like I said, book budget. I will give my thoughts on this and then if I have the opportunity to do so, I will pick up more volumes of this respective series. I think everything else that I have in this respective book haul from Barnes & Noble that's left over is YA, so I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, not to make this video too long, but um, you'll see like a range of different um, titles here, including a few of them where I've wanted to pick them up for a much longer time, but just have not had the opportunity to do so. So let's go ahead and dive in. First one that I want to feature is Ar Ar Arushi uh, Avachat's uh, Arya Kana's Bollywood Moment. This is the cover for your reference. I actually really like the cover of this and I thought that it was really cute. This is uh, essentially like a, a lot of like different things in terms of a rom-com with some Bollywood moments. So I'm excited to be able to pick this up and give my thoughts on it. It was also on sale as you can see from the 50% sticker off. So um, yeah, uh, like I, 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 this is the example of a um, illustrated cover that I actually do really like and it does it, though it like you can kind of look at this and still kind of see like a little bit of ambiguity between uh, whether this is YA or adult I can actually tell I, actually I can't really tell if you look at it in on terms of things like even though this is a, like, clearly YA from the color scheme and on, on things like that the design of the characters is still a little bit ambiguous so if you uh, weren't uh, if you weren't attuned in terms of what um, releases were here, then you wouldn't be able to tell this, which um, we talked about it in one in my bookish discussion. We'll talk about it more in one of my other bookish discussions in terms of things. The ambiguity really makes it hard to be able to tell based on some of the designs that are for, are for adult and some of the designs that for, are for YA but I still thought that this was really well done in terms of the, lo the the level of the illustrations, the level of the lettering, and just this overarching cover in general. But I think, yeah, you can make a case for the lines being a little bit blurred here. Next book is a monthly pick for Barnes & Noble, um, and also one that I was able to get on sale. This is part of Midnight Reads for um, Source Books 
fire this is that uh, not my name by megan lally and as you can see this is the cover right here for your reference the main character in this is one that has um, lost her memory and is found by someone who um, claims to be her father and she starts noticing things that are not quite right in terms of um, shady th uh, things and details and so she, as she's trying to pick up the pieces of who what her identity is um, she's also trying to figure out the mystery behind events in terms of what happened beforehand so I'm very excited this is why a thriller I am very excited to be able to pick this up because usually this type of um, story is my bread and butter, definitely my cup of tea. So I'm excited to be able to pick this up and give you my thoughts. And then we have two books from the same series from a series that where the covers were redesigned for um, this respective series. I'll put the original cover of the first book up for your reference. This was a, a, a book that I kind of like wanted to read and had on my TBR, but it kind of flew under the radar for me. But when I was browsing the YA section for my local Barnes and Noble, the covers stood out to me. And uh, this is a, a, also kind of like a, a way of me saying, hey, like they knew what they were doing when they were designing the covers and they did a stellar job of the redesign. This is a series by um, Tracy, um, Levin Seller, and th this is one that stars. I'm not sure if it's called the series is called Daughter of the Pirate King, um, but uh, this is the first book in that respective series, Daughter of the Pirate King. This is the cover up here, reference. This is a beautifully designed cover, and when I saw it, I was like, okay, I, I definitely want to get this edition as soon as possible. And not only that, like I. I knew what the premise of this was like so I knew I wanted to pick it up but I was surprised in terms of how well they did with it in terms of things so I I, I like I picked this up and I also picked up the uh, follow-up from it which is Daughter of the Science Room Queen which they also did a wonderful job with the, uh, re the design of this cover and paperback so I am excited to be able to get to both of these books Respectively, I've heard um, great things about both of them from um, people who have been in my reading circles, but I do want to be able to give this series a chance for myself and give my thoughts about it. Next is a one, a book that is, has been uh, released in paperback. I don't know how long, but it has been on my TBR for the longest time. And... <laughs> I, it is like irresistible to me, like in terms of like books that have to do with twins. So of course, I, considering this is gothic, historical, and it has twins at the center of it, I knew that I wanted to pick this up. This is Kelly McWilliams' Mirror Girls. And as you can see, this is the cover for your reference. I am very excited to be able to pick up this book and give my thoughts on it once I'm, I'm done. But we shall see how this goes, and I'm hoping to um, pick it up probably, if it's not this month, then probably sometime next month. Uh, fingers crossed if I can get through my TBR, respectively. And last but not least, this was a part of my um, respective um, book haul from Barnes & Noble, and I love the design of this respective cover, though I'm not 100% sure if I could have told you whether this was YA or not based on the cover alone, though the the cover design in itself made me want to pick this up. And the fact that it is con uh, like um, having to do with a mysterious hotel. So like I'm a sucker for YA um, horror, YA gothic. Um, they, uh, spooky, creepy, uh, magical houses, things like that. So I knew I wanted to pick this up. This is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. And as you can see, this is a cover for your reference. So I am excited to be able to um, pick this up as well and give my thoughts on it once I'm done. And that is it for my respective uh, book haul from Barnes & Noble. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button hit the, and hit the notification bell to be informed of when I post new videos. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I'll see you next video.